Hi there, Jennifer Roberts here with a tutorial for Plane Maker. This video was recorded using version 1151. We'll continue our look at 2D generic instruments with a focus on a special type of generic, the rotary. Rotaries are one of the most useful generic instruments, but also one of the most complex. Working with 2D instruments requires Plane Maker, image editing software, I will be using Photoshop, and X-Plane to view and test your instruments. We will not be covering 3D cockpits or instruments in these videos, as they are quite a bit more complicated and require 3D rendering software such as Blender. We'll be continuing with the Cirrus Jet, where we've already modified the 2D panel, added two generic needle instruments, and created customized artwork. So first, let's place a Gen Rotary instrument on our 2D panel. By default, this instrument has seven positions. It's also fairly small, so let's double the size here at the bottom of the window. We need to pick a data ref, or this instrument will be inoperable. Remember that when I use the keyboard shortcut Control plus P, Plane Maker will save a copy of the default art in the correct place in our aircraft folder hierarchy. We'll want to rename this to avoid name collisions in case we want to use another generic rotary in the future. Note that while you don't need to keep the word Gen Rotary in the file name, you will need to keep the provided numbering scheme. Let's open this up in Photoshop to take a look at these files in detail. So the background is simply a bunch of white tick marks and text. The knob part is seven equally spaced images with the knob location set up slightly differently in each image. This shows us that a rotary is actually a cell-based animation. So if we want a rotating knob with fewer positions, say just five, we could crop off two of the seven images in our default file. We'll do this by changing our canvas size. Our current width is 350 pixels. Dividing that by seven for each of our images tells us that each cell is 50 pixels wide. So if we reduce our width by 100 pixels, from 350 to 250 pixels, we will now have five animation cells. We'll also want to modify our background to have only five positions. I'll save these art changes, go back to Plane Maker, and reload the artwork. Now we need to tell Plane Maker about our changes to how many animation cells we have. If we don't, we get a pretty silly looking animation. We need to change the value in the positions property from 7 to 5. And now our animation preview makes sense again. We also need to modify our keyframe table. Remember that we start counting at 0, not 1, so our values here go from 0 to 4 in both columns for the 5 cell animations. Save here, go back to X-Plane and reload the aircraft and art to see our five position rotary in action. Note that by default, our mouse cursor shows left and right rotation icons, but we can also change that in Plane Maker in the rotary type property. If we select left right here, then reload our aircraft and art in the sim, we can see the cursor has changed. Next, let's take a look at using a rotary for an entirely different type of instrument, a landing gear position indicator. Let's add another generic rotary to the 2D panel. With it selected, press Ctrl plus P again to copy the generic art into our aircraft folder. We'll rename these, keeping the numbering scheme intact, and then open them in Photoshop. This time we want an entirely different and much simpler animation, just a color change to show us if the gear is up, down, or in transition. So we're going to completely redo our image files. Let's erase the tick mark overlay and simply leave the image transparent. This will actually help our instrument in terms of performance. The transparent background will get merged during load and will not impact our frame rate or VRAM. Then we'll open the other file, delete the existing art, and resize it. Since we want three stages of animation, 
we want our image size and our canvas size to be three cells wide. Our dimensions will be 168 by 56 pixels. Now we need to create our cells in red, yellow, and green for our three stages. Save the art changes and go back to Plane Maker. The SF50 has three wheels, so we actually want three gear indicators. Let's add two more rotaries. Now we can select all of them by holding Shift while we click on them, and then check the Apply to All box here to edit them all at once. In this way we can change the ping file, set the positions to three, and set the data ref on all of them at the same time. By default, the generic rotary is clickable, but since these are just an indicator light, we can change the rotary type to no click. The gear deploy data ref we're using is an array, so we need to specify the index on each one separately. We have three gears and three indicators, so they will be numbered 0, 1, and 2 respectively. Now let's set up our keyframe table. First, we need to add another line. Our image column needs to be 0, 1, and 2 for our three animations. Our ratio column will be 0, 0.5, and 1. Save our aircraft, then go back to X-Plane, reload the aircraft and art to see our gear indicator in action. So the generic rotary instrument is one of the most useful in X-Plane. They can be used for mouse interaction or for displays, and they're the only cell animation generic instrument. And one final tip for working with generic instruments. If your instrument isn't working like you expected it to in the sim, DataRef Editor will be the most important debugging tool to help you understand why. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.